I don't want to ever cut any corners and, and cheat the game, I think. I want to just give all my 100%. Derek Andre Thornton Jr., born May 30th, 1997. Today's feature is the story of timing, fit, and development using the examples of a player whose basketball journey took an unexpected turn and soon showed those were exactly what he'd need to achieve his goal of making the NBA. When you see point guards like Alonzo Ball, De'Aaron Fox, Dennis Smith Jr., even Peyton Pritchard all go on to make successful transitions from high school to college to the NBA. You can't help but think of Derek Thornton Jr., who would have been ranked just as, if not higher than those guys, had he not reclassified to an earlier class in order to attend college a year premature. As the saying goes, timing is everything, and the weeding out process in sports makes exceptions for no one. Once a decision is made and acted upon, it can change the course of everything expected to happen. Take a guy like Frank Jackson, a point guard a part of Derek's original 2016 class that went to Duke as a true freshman and did what Derek set out to just a year earlier. He didn't even need to put up amazing numbers to do so and was still able to leave Duke after one year and be drafted in the NBA. Sometimes the difference in both examples can be how well they fit in those places as far as game style and also the environment they're in that includes the players they play with as with a program like Duke can look much different by the year. Thornton, as far as development, was on his way to being as good as it gets on his level, a player compared to Kyrie Irving in high school that could break the pressure of a defense with ease, cerebral player, the son of a coach, a natural leader, solid athleticism, and a great foundation as far as his shooting form to see why he was ranked a top 13 player in his reclassified class and top 3 at his position, recruited by Kentucky, Arizona, and Duke. A great reminder to young hoopers that may find themselves in the same position is not to dwell on the ways to speed up your development and understand that could be the key factor that throws off your timing, making your fit at all levels after seem like something is missing. Also remember, you being advanced among your peers is not a bad thing. That's what you work so hard for. You attempting to jump ahead too soon is a huge risk, one that places you now among the pack instead of far ahead in the one you left. To only be a year older but more developed, more confident, and add more to your resume could ensure you being drafted high and able to stick on a level like the NBA. Derek Thornton is a great example of that as he's a good player that took a great risk that cost him a lot more in the end. Let's talk about it. Salute to Manny Kofi on IG for this request. It's your boy JC Stunning Growth. Let's get it, man. Take a minute to like, subscribe, and comment on who I should do next. Derek Thornton Jr. is a 6'3 point guard from Woodland Hills, California that began his high school career at Sierra Canyon in LA as a freshman, then transferred to Finley Prep in Henderson, Nevada, a program his father says he knew he wanted his son to be a part of since the 6th grade. By his junior year, he was clearly more advanced than his peers in IQ, leadership and experience, having outstanding showings all across the country in different top camps. Since an early age, he and his father would wake up early mornings and work toward him becoming a McDonald's All-American and one of the best players in his class. He averaged 17 points and 6 assists as a junior before reclassifying from 2016 to 2015, entering Duke University at 18 years old. He'd go on to play for three different programs in the next five years in college. Stunt number one, not staying the course. Hindsight is 2020, and of course we can see now that Derek Thornton's decision to forego his senior year to enter college early was a bad decision. Even his father made this much clear when later asked about it. But as a rule of thumb, a decision of this magnitude should only be truly considered if at least one of these things shows the player is far more advanced. If physically he's blessed in size and or athleticism, his production and numbers clearly state that he's able to compete on even an NBA level right now, or he's given assurances that he'll have room to grow 
and develop when he finally gets to his next endeavor. As good as I think Derek was as a junior in high school, he just didn't meet these requirements as he wasn't at all physically or athletically dominant compared to his original class. Can even go as far as to say he wasn't even top 3 in a class that consisted of the ultra quick, fast, athletic and a bit taller De'Aaron Fox, the 6'6 Lonzo Ball who possessed passing skills that would even be great in the NBA if not for his injury woes, or Dennis Smith Jr. who was one of the top athletes as a point guard of probably the last decade, even before his senior year. Those guys may have fared better reclassifying, not Thornton, who was solid but in my opinion right where he needed to be. The reason he reclassified is also something you should never do, and that's allow a college coach to convince you to change your plans and go through the academic work not to mention the physical and mental work it takes to skip a year of high school and be prepared for college. All college coaches, no matter how esteemed they are, how prestige their resume, or how many championships they've won, at the end of the day, they have to produce to keep their jobs. You are just one kid in one season. Coach K convinced Thornton and his family to reclassify and join the Blue Devils a year early to fill the void of losing Tyus Jones to the NBA as they didn't have another true point guard on the roster. Right there you see it was a program need to have you, not a show they'll move things around to get you because they want you. Derek enrolled at Duke after recently turning 18 years old and wasn't mentally ready to perform on that level, being so far from home, also the urgency to play well, as at Duke, there's no time to sit on the pot and cook slowly. Next year, they'll reload again and you could find yourself buried under another top recruit. He averaged just 7 points and 2 assists in 26 minutes a game, starting 20 of the 36 games played. After the season, he transferred to USC, citing the fit just wasn't right, and his father saying the reclassifying move was not a good decision. Stunt number two, missed development. It may seem only missing a year of development is not that big a deal, but then you have to factor in the difference a year can make in life period. A person's life can entirely change in a day, an hour, a second, an entire year of achievements like making the McDonald's All-American, adding that to your resume, only bolsters your draft stock and also boosts your confidence as a player, being validated that how you feel about yourself, others do as well. Derek was well on his way to becoming one of the best point guards in his class, just about to embark on a great senior year of achievements and mentally becoming stronger. He also needed much work in the shooting department which was maybe the biggest knock on his game in college and rightfully so. For a player to decline every year, even after a year of sitting out, says a lot to anyone paying attention. As mentioned earlier, his shooting form doesn't look broke at all, in no way he looks like an inadequate shooter, yet that's what the numbers seem to say. He was also a poor or streaky at best free throw shooter, which also says there's a problem in that area overall. That missed senior year of high school would have done wonders for mostly his confidence and learning where and when to get his shots maybe also put him in a better school to showcase his growth. Duke just didn't have the time or room for him to learn on the fly. Stun number three, three schools in five years. I'm sure those words are uttered when scouts pick up a resume like Derek Thornton Jr.'s. Immediately red flags go off because why does a guy we're looking to pay millions to play basketball need three schools in five years to make the NBA? The ones we're looking to give this money are advanced enough it shouldn't take more than a few years to make that clear. Or if they do happen to stay full term, at least along the way or that final year, they show they were a level above their peers by what they produce on paper. It would be difficult for a guy that averages 12 points and 3 assists as a 5th year senior to be drafted in the NBA or given much of a chance in the league after college. Not to mention regressing in a few areas important to his position like shooting and turnovers. 
Thornton wound up going undrafted in 2020 and began his pro career in Serbia and embarking currently on his journey across the world. All in all, Derek Thornton is not a sad case because he's still playing a game as a career and got to experience college for an extended time and hopefully got his degree from a great school like Boston College. He was on his way but rushed it at the wrong time and for these reasons, his growth was stunning. Salute, much respect, it's your boy JC Stunning Growth and I'm out.